Sponsored by The Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a Bobby Bone show. Rock and Review is catching up with uh, one of my favorite guitarists from the band Kicks. It is Brian Damage Forsyth. And uh, man, you, you have been so busy over the years. And obviously, I knew all your work with Kicks, but also, you know, uh, with uh, Rhino Bucket, mm -hmm. you know, that you play with those guys and you got a new album out too. Yes, yes. You got a few things going, Brian. Well, yeah, I mean, it sounds, well, you know, it's weird because on paper it sounds like I'm really busy, but it does. I do a lot of just hanging out, too. It looks like you do a lot of gigs and a lot of shows, you know, between the snake handlers, you know, doing the music for, uh, for TV, for the Discovery Channel, uh, Monster Garage. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're really bored. It looks like you're getting to play a lot of guitar, man, and, and you sound great, as always. Yeah, I love to play guitar. That's, you know, so it's, it's, it's like just having fun. <laughs> right. Well, you, and, and you were Maryland based, but then you went to LA for a while and did that scene. And now you're, you're here in Nashville, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was out in LA for 26 years and wow. uh, it got expensive out there. And I, <laughs> so I started looking around here and it was like, oh, wow, this is pretty cool. And plus the music scene is just uh, crazy. Well, you know, speaking of which, I have to bring up, you know, uh, the Kicks new album that just came out, Fuse 30 Reblown. And you were telling me, you know, with the, with the pledge music stuff and everything, to mm -hmm. where you guys actually got these albums now. And, and this is taking the 1988 hit album you guys did and kind of retooling it, right? Yeah, yeah. We gave it to, we just handed it over to Bo Hill and he, he completely remixed it without listening to the original. Really? And he, he, yeah, he just sort of did his own take on because it. Because he really did like it. It's, it's, you know, I think it brings it into 2019, which, mm -hmm. you know, you guys were all over the radio back in the day then when that album came out and with all the two people you were on tour with as well. Mm -hmm. You know, with Tesla and everybody else, and I think Great White back in the day. Yeah. And it's like, and now to have this album come back out, and uh, it's, it's pretty darn cool. Yeah, yeah. And, and we had fun, you, you know, when it came out, we did the, the whole album in its entirety. We did it for about, like about a year. Yeah. Like every show. And uh, that was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. And so you guys are going to be touring, I mean, with, with Kicks, obviously with the uh, Nashville Rockin' Podcast, you know, uh, you, you're playing tonight's show, and you're going to be doing the podcast stuff, but you guys are going to be out on tour with Kicks as well, right? Yes. Yeah, I, I'm leaving Thursday. I mean, I, I'm out every weekend, it seems like. Really? That's yeah. awesome. Well, you know, and you know so many people have been on the Rock and Reviews over the years, too, because, I mean, with Mark Slaughter, Kip Winger, oh, Tom yeah. Kiefer, it's like all the bands that you, that you guys play with. It's just like, you know, it, it's just like hanging out with family, right? Yeah, yeah, or, or, or like one of those rock cruises, like where, <laughs> where everybody's on there. <laughs> it's got to be fun, though, man, to be able to, you know, I, I can't believe it when you and I were talking that it had been 30 years since this came out. I know, I know, I know. The, old, the older you get, the, the faster time goes. Yeah. Too. It's so true, but you know what, well, you're still rocking it though. I wanted to bring up, you know, music-wise, uh, you know, you're still using your Fender Tele out on the road a lot and your Strat, mm -hmm. but also you've been playing some uh, pretty cool looking some Midas guitars out. Yeah, well, I have one, but. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been a fan of, of Zamedis guitars since, since seeing Ron Wood with one. Right. You know? Yeah, that really, I think, brought him to so many people's attention. And I think, he ha I think Ron Wood had the original, the metal front. Right. Like he, he had the first one. Yeah. Yeah, just amazing. Well, and also I want to bring up the uh, thing to where uh, you've been friends with uh, Paul Reed Smith of PRS for a few years. Mm. In fact, he used to kind of be your guitar tech. Or not tag, but I would take my guitars to him for repair. He'd do my repairs. Really? Yeah. Is that like when he was back in the garage? It was like an attic, a little <laughs> attic room uh, in Annapolis. Wow. And it was him and uh, John Ingram. Yeah. It was just those two, and they'd be up there, and I'd go visit them. And, and we used to call John uh, Orky back then. <laughs> and he'd be sitting in the corner just sanding, sanding oh just by gosh. hand. All the guitars are handmade. You know, it's like crazy. That's just ridiculous. This tiny little, and you had to bend over because the, the ceiling's... You know, it was an attic. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and the factory's a little bigger now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Have you been there? <laughs> no, I haven't. I just oh, get to see the pin. I want to go to the, uh, the uh, PRS event. They, they always hold, what is it, in the fall or winter? And uh, I really want to go attend that. They yeah. do the whole tour of if the factory. You, yeah, if you've never been to the factory, you have to go there. It's amazing. Yeah, Especially, cause... well, for me, you know, seeing where he started to that. It's yeah, because you were there from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I got to ask you, too, it's like, you know, gear wise, I know, you know, you don't use a lot of pedals or anything. You're pretty much, you know, uh, you know, using your basement amp 
you know, black face and then, you know, one or two pedals. Well, the basement I don't take out live. I, I, I used to, but uh, in fact, I took it out on a whole Rhino Bucket tour yeah. at one point. This was way back in like two, two, 2007 or so and ended up blowing the amp at one no. point and I had to, had to have it repaired. Oh my gosh. So that kind of scared me. So now it, it stays at home. I, I bring it out to just to re record with. Yeah. And then, so what are you using on the road then pretty much? 78 and 79 uh, Marshall JMP 50 watts. Perfect. I've got four of those, two on the, two at home and then two uh, in the, the uh, kicks trailer. Really? <laughs> that, that's gear. cool though, because that way you can keep your sound. Yeah. Well, you know, and I'll, I'll tell you, you know, I was mentioned to you on Rhino Bucket, which, uh, you know, I love the, the music from like what was on Wayne's World, you know, Take a Ride with Yourself and everything. It's like, and you said what a great band to play with as well. And so are you like splitting tours and stuff between Kix and Rhino Bucket? Sort of. I mean, Kix is still the main thing and we play so much. I kind That's of a good problem. Yeah, yeah. It's a quality <laughs> problem. But I kind of feel like, I, you know, I shortchanged Rhino Bucket, you know, I have to sort of squeeze them in when I have time. Yeah. But usually during like the, the winter months, like January, February, it's kind of a slow month for kicks. Yeah. So that's when like Rhino Bucket will, will, will take off and go over to Europe and do like an eight week run or yeah. something. You know, it's like, an, I, and I always uh, enjoyed the sound of Rhino Bucket. And you were telling me, you know, with their music, you just get to play all the lead parts then. Yeah, it's just George sings and plays rhythm. Yeah, that, that's a shame for you. <laughs> it, they're probably no fun at all, right? Yeah, I get sore fingers. <laughs> <laughs> you actually get to be the rock guy then yeah, on yeah. lead guitar. It's like, take it, Brian. <laughs> what a blast. Now, when you guys go over to Europe and everything and, uh, and you know, playing shows over there, mm -hmm. do you fly all your gear over or do they pretty much set you up with it there? No, uh, actually, th those, um, those European things, it's pretty cool. The, the, we use this this uh, company called, um, uh, oh, oh, my mind's going to go blank. <laughs> uh, God, um, God, I've been so good lately with my memory. <laughs> Teenage Head Music, that's the name of it. Okay. It is a touring company. Wow. But it's all inclusive. It's uh, the guy books the shows. He's, he, he's got, now he's got like three or four different vans, but they're those uh, Sprinter vans. Oh, yeah. So we, we, and he's the tour guide, but he's got like four guys that, that work for him now that, that do tours. But and they pretty much drive you guys around to the show. Yeah, so they'll, they'll drive, and then we have the gear in the back, and they have this guy, Manny, who, who it's his, his company. He's got a whole garage full of gear, and one of, set up, one of his setups are these old JM, JMC 800s. Wow. Um, What's the one I use is like an 85 or something in right. a matching cabinet. Oh, and then, yeah. then he's got another one that George uses. So we, we always request those. Yeah. So those are in the truck. Th those in, in, the, in a, I don't know. They have drums. They have everything. But anyway, so it's all inclusive. So we and don't you have just to, take your guitars over? Yeah, all you have to do is take the guitars. So it's not like, you know, when you were back with the shoes and you were like in a VW van. Then. <laughs> this yeah. is actually more professional since you're... You know, on a European tour. Yeah. Well, it's the same with kicks in the States. You know, when we do fly dates. Yeah. Um, it's always rented backline. So in those cases, I use a, a 900. Well, you guys have so many hit songs, though, with kicks. It's like, you know, when you guys blew up in the late 80s and then on into the 90s, uh, that was a heck of a good run. And also to still be able to do it now and come out with a new album. It's crazy. Well, it's crazy because we took uh, almost 10 years off like yeah. during the 90s. And then uh, in 2003, Steve calls me up and goes, hey, uh, they wanted me just to come in just to, as a guest appearance and just jump up on stage as a surprise for, yeah. some, for some funny money show or something that Steve was doing. Right. And um, it, that didn't work out, but that got us talking. And I, we started thinking, well, why, why don't we put a couple shows together and see what happens? And it just... I mean, it was such a success. We just right. we kept sort of extending it and extending yeah. it and then got a booking agent and then the whole 80s thing happened again. Yeah. So we just ran with it, you know. Well, you know what? And you guys, you know, have always brought, you know, great shows. You have fun on stage, but also the music. You recognize the songs. You know, like we were talking about, you know, in the news, you know, with Don't Close Your Eyes. It's mm. like, that's one of those songs, man, you always heard on the radio and that just blew up for you guys. Yeah, that was our, our hit, <laughs> our yeah. one hit. Well, no, but I mean, but you had other ones that got a lot of radio play, but that one, yeah. it was just every, you couldn't go to a, a dance or anything 
to where that song was not being played it for got, like a it, year or so. It actually got to number 11. Number 11, see? Not quite 10. <laughs> <laughs> Which is one louder. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, uh, what a great album. Just want to make sure, you know, uh, for your fans as well, uh, Kicks Fuse 30 Reblown. It's on the website. You also have uh, things up on social media, and you guys will have them out on tour with you available? Uh, on the East Coast, we have them because okay. we, we, our merch person can only go as far as uh, driving right. distance. <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you what, uh, you know, and obviously if you download music too, I listen to the whole album, and, and if you love the original album, this one really brings it, I think, into 2019 with the remixes and everything. Yeah, he did a great job. Yeah, it's like going, it's just, you really hear the instrumentation and the separation better and the voices. It's just the whole thing. What a great album. Yeah, and it's crazy. Well, we got the you know the master tracks that we handed over to Bo, and, yeah. and uh, there was a lot of stuff that you know when when they did the initial uh, mix for the the '88 release. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you, especially as a guitar player, you just I kind of would go in and just play over the song, and and they then they just pick and choose like guitar fills. Interesting. So there's a bunch of stuff on the tracks that that are still on there that that weren't used. They were just wow. sort of buried. And Bo would find stuff, and he'd put it in there, and I'd go, oh, wow, I forgot. I, you know, I didn't remember playing that. You know what? I noticed <laughs> it, because I noticed, you know, because you're used to hearing the original. Yeah. And then with the new tracks, it's like going, I don't remember that guitar part being in there before. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that's why. Because, yeah, they, it, was in, it was on the track, but it was just pulled down. You just know? buried under. Well, I'm, I'm glad you got the remix. I'll tell you what, be sure, and also, if you're around here in Nashville, he will be at the uh, Nashville Rockin' Podcast Expo uh, tonight as a featured artist and also with the show tomorrow, doing lots of interviews. But more importantly, even with uh, Rhino Bucket, the new album, and also Kicks with the brand new album, it is Brian Damage Forsyth. Get the album, go see them live in concert this year, too. Thanks for watching The Rock Interview. Sponsored by The Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a Bobby Bones show.